I'm Sophia, and I'm 36. Even after being married, I kept working. I am two years older than my hubby. I just assume he's an elderly man because we grew up together, and he calls me an old woman. We still argue frequently about things pertaining to money and our child, despite my attempts to avoid responding in the same way. My employer, a sizable business, has a decent maternity and child care leave policy. I had no trouble going back to work after having a child. About my job, I have no grievances at all. The same company employs my spouse as well, however he moved divisions after I got back. We therefore don't often cross paths at work. Compared to me in the general affairs department, my spouse, who works in sales, has more social obligations. I also recognize that he frequently is unable to leave work on time. I still find myself thinking about it though. Never once has my spouse assisted with picking up or dropping off our child at daycare. Hey, how about periodically picking up our child? That's what you're supposed to do. In addition, I had no desire for children in the first place. Yet the kid has already been born. It is useless to mention that right now. It's untrue what you said about me getting attached to him when I see him. I'm not at all attached to him. He's not even fond of me. You never play with him, which is why. Max tries to talk to you, but you don't even acknowledge him. During my free days, I want to unwind. I'm not in the mood to look after the kid. Currently enrolled in the fourth grade of primary school is Max, our lone child. He can comprehend a wide range of concepts at this age. He is undoubtedly aware of his father's lack of concern for him. When Max was younger, he used to talk to my husband a lot, but my husband would always respond with brevity and dismissal. Dad, hello, pay attention, how come? For now, I'm watching TV. I'm sorry, but don't disturb me. You can't say stuff like that, you know. Put an end to it. Every day after work, I'm exhausted. In contrast to you in the Department of General Affairs, sales calls for careful thought. Even on my days off, please don't tire me out. The tale remains unchanged. My spouse has no involvement at all in parenting or school-related activities. He has never gone to a sports day or parent-teacher conference. I feel like I'm a mother of one almost entirely. Not even our son is striking up talks with his dad anymore. Furthermore, my spouse indulges in himself rather than purchasing anything for his son. I'm getting more and more frustrated with him since he rules the house. I try not to moan too much, but it's inevitable. And there's a rationale behind it. Actually, news of my husband's passing surfaced around the time our child turned three. We split the living expenses because we both work. But I had no idea how my husband was spending his pay. However, our living expenses have increased with the birth of our child. Consequently, our respective portions of the costs also went up. We agreed to put fixed sums of money into a joint account to cover living expenses. Nevertheless, my spouse regularly neglected to deposit money on the designated date, even though we had only increased it by 200 since the birth of our child. He disclosed to me that he had debt prior to our marriage when I confronted him. Additionally, the debt was still very nearly $30,000. He laughed foolishly and said it looked like it would never end when I asked him what the debt was for, how much he has been paying each month, and when he expects to pay it off. Well, even if I make payments, the balance doesn't go down because I've been paying it off with revolving credit. How come? I was momentarily taken aback by the man's words. To put it briefly, he has been making monthly purchases that exceed his payment amount. However, since he pays it off with revolving credit, the total amount he pays stays constant, which causes the balance to rise rather than decrease over time. I was furious with him for his recklessness. He was not even aware that he was a father. I canceled all of his credit cards at the moment to deter him from making any further unnecessary purchases. I asked him directly what he would do if the debt kept growing, even though he complained a lot and I was able to stop him from using them. It would be one thing if the money had been used for the family's expenses, but this debt had been accrued for his personal pleasure. An adult should naturally take care of it on their own. However, I raised the monthly payment since I wanted to pay it back as quickly as possible. In the end, I paid for most of the living expenditures. Seven years have passed since then and the loan has long since been settled. Nevertheless, my spouse now provides less money than he did previously to cover living expenditures. He obstinately refused to raise the amount he pays for living expenses when I asked him to, using the justification that I make more money. He believes that the higher earner should logically make more contributions to the family. My spouse is also not very good at selling. He's not dedicated to his work because he's been abandoned by his colleagues and is simply decomposing. He hasn't been promoted because of this. Two years ago, I was given a promotion to manager of the general affairs department. 
My pay rose in comparison to my husband's as a result, but my hubby wasn't happy about that either. I tried to encourage him with some suggestions, but he wasn't fond of it either. What do you know about sales, he said. Don't interfere needlessly and disregard everything I said. I started to feel less and less like saying anything because whatever I said just made others argue. Subsequently, my spouse informed me one day that he was returning to his hometown for a high school reunion. To be clear, his elder brother and his spouse currently reside in the family house. His parents had previously passed away. My husband's brother and I don't get along and don't communicate at all. Five years ago, after their father went away, they got into a fight about the inheritance. My mother-in-law needed long-term nursing care and his brother and his wife had been caring for her. My spouse had refrained from being involved at all. Although I was sorry as well, I was unable to assist right away due to job obligations. I had been taking care of most things on my own since our child was born, so I hadn't been able to see my in-laws very much. Furthermore, my mother-in-law died three years before my father-in-law. That was a year prior to the public learning of my husband's passing. It seems that my father-in-law left a will specifying that my brother-in-law and his spouse would get all the property. I told my hubby that was all right because I felt it was only normal. My spouse, on the other hand, took offense to it and made wild accusations. Ultimately, they came to an understanding whereby my brother-in-law paid the appropriate portion. However, my brother-in-law became enraged with my husband's behavior at the moment and instructed him to stop being involved. Considering all of that, I find it awkward to be around my brother-in-law and his spouse, and I haven't spoken to them since the death of my father-in-law. My spouse paid off his outstanding debt with the money he received at that time. That's when I learned that he had more than half of the balance left over, despite his claims that he couldn't help with living expenses due to his increased revolving payments. It was an absurd falsehood. Under the guise of increasing payments, he had not been contributing to living expenditures. Instead, he had been utilizing it for his personal amusement costs. It was nonsensical. He blatantly remarked, well, in the end, it got settled, didn't it? In response to my complaints, and my available money dropped since you prevented me from using my cards. I am forced to take it out of my living expenditures. He dismissed it entirely. That's how my brother-in-law broke things off between us. Therefore, he cannot stay at his family's house, even if he claims to be returning to his hometown. He told me he had reservations at a hotel close by when I asked where he would be sleeping. Given that he was going back to his hometown, it was a little depressing to consider that he would not even be able to see the home where he was born and reared but I decided not to bring it up, and I said him farewell. Daddy, you're not staying at home today. Yes, it is correct. Our youngster yelled out to his father from behind me as I watched him depart with a smile. Furthermore, our youngster appears to be a little relieved that his father would not be returning home. It brought to my attention once more the fact that my son didn't want his father to be around, and I realized that I shared his sentiments. We should go out to eat since it's Saturday and mommy doesn't have work. Really? Yes. Hooray. I was relieved that my husband was not with me, and I began to consider our future carefully. But my spouse began going out more frequently after that day of the high school reunion. He frequently goes out late into the night, especially on his days off. His demeanor is a typically upbeat, and he carries his phone close to him instead of leaving it on the table as in the past. He appears to even bring it with him when he takes a shower or the restroom. Regardless of your perspective, it seems strange. Hey, you've gone out more frequently lately, have you not? Where are you going? Yes, I just wanted to work out for a little. Thus, on my days off, I've begun going to the gym. You are aware that your physical strength begins to wane in your late 30s. Really? Do fitness centers also offer lodging? No, but occasionally I spend the entire evening drinking with pals. You can drink more while you're in good health. I understand. Will you continue working out and playing sports with Max as well? That might be a possibility. His gaze remained elusive. If it was a lie, he could have told a better one, I thought as I cast a harsh stare at him. My husband's adultery was already proven in my mind. I choose to follow him when he goes out instead of hiring a private detective for the time being. My spouse boarded the train and alighted at the station close to his parents' residence. My spouse gladly got into the automobile that was waiting for a young woman there. I had thought the woman was a previous classmate because of his altered behavior during the reunion but it was now obvious that she was in her 20s. However, I couldn't help but notice that he spends carelessly, ignores our son, and now I have suspicions that he is cheating. It's absurd to even be together anymore. I decided to divorce my husband, and I began getting ready to do so. I'm leaving now though, 
I may spend the night at a friend's house. I understand. Be careful. I felt that it was the ideal opportunity. But at that very moment, I realized my wallet had lost my credit card. It was there, as I recall, until yesterday. I had not taken it out or used it. Therefore, I was at a loss as to where I could have left it. I reported it as lost to the credit card company right away. I was asked when I had used it most recently, but I couldn't put a date on it. I gave them the information after looking over the transaction records on my computer. Thankfully, they told me it hadn't been used since then, which eased my concerns. Why did it disappear when I hadn't lost it or taken it out of my wallet? There was just one response. My husband must have grabbed it out of my wallet without even thinking about it. That was the only reason I could think of. I assumed my spouse would take care of it. My spouse had been getting collection letters from different credit card firms for the last six months or so. I assumed the credit limit on his own cards had been reached. He must have applied for other credit cards covertly after paying off his debt. I decided to ignore it, figuring there was no use in saying anything since he would be the one covering the cost. But taking the card from someone else? That merely becomes him an ordinary thief. Either way, I'm relieved that I caught it early. I immediately began packing up my husband's possessions. I am aware of his location. I hired a private detective firm to identify my husband's extramarital partner. She is a 26-year-old who resides close to his parents' home. She's my husband's junior by around 10 years. The investigative report states that the woman he has been dating is divorced and reportedly returned to her parents' home the previous year. It's likely that John first got to know her while she worked at the business hotel where he was staying for his high school reunion. Even if they might have had a pleasant conversation, they recognized each other by sight and lived in the same neighborhood. John has been to her parents' place a lot. Since he was a young child, he has known her parents by sight. Therefore, perhaps he feels at ease going there. But even if they are aware that he is still married, do her parents still let him stay over? All right, that's irrelevant. John's possessions soon arrived, so I packed them into the truck and sent them on their way. It's our turn next. The credit card has been terminated. Max, should we also move out? Yes, let's carry that out. Max appears quite happy. He said absolutely when I told him we would be living apart from his father. John had long since ceased to be my husband, but in Max's eyes, he had also stopped to be a parent. I felt bad for not deciding on this sooner. We had moved into our new place by dusk. In front of the real estate agent, we had fully vacated the house we had been renting, shut off the utilities, and returned the keys. John called as Max and I were deciding what to eat for dinner. Whoa, what on earth is this? Why are you mailing me my belongings? There is shock among all of us here. It appears that you are staying there quite a few nights. I felt that having your personal items there would be convenient. Give up being joking. Emma's parents now know that I'm still married thanks to you. The divorce documents are in the cargo. In any case, how did you find out where I am? I employed a private detective. God appeared to believe that his liaison remained undisclosed. I was treated too casually. It's clear from your conduct. I had no doubts about the affair, but I also had a job, so I didn't want to waste time finding out who the woman was. Plus, I wanted hard evidence. Evidence? In order to secure the maximum amount of funding for our son's education, it is preferable to have proof of the affair. You will have to pay for this when I get home. House? What location is that? Naturally, of course. That is our home. I understand. You were still planning on returning home. It's unexpected. As they say, the next day it felt like my husband John returned to our house. When he saw our old house, he must have been astonished. I'd sent him completed divorce papers, so why he would assume that I would still be living in that place is beyond me. Furthermore, he attempted to use my card today and was mortified to learn that it was ineffective. Of course, I filed the lost card report, and I also told the police that it was stolen. What? John had a high-pitched voice. It was clear that he was worried about getting detained. To be honest with you though, I wouldn't be content unless he felt that much. I did report it to the police, but regrettably, they informed me that John would not face theft charges because he was a family member. Moreover, the credit card firm states that if a family member who resides with you steals and uses your credit card, it is the card owner's fault and the fees will not be waived. It implies I must make a payment. I wish I had discovered it before it was put to use. After John's adultery was established, the divorce proceeded amicably. I informed the company about my divorce. It's customary to report a divorce as soon as feasible because my last name would change. By the way, when I was asked why, I casually mentioned John's adultery, which caused the rumor to spread fast around the organization. John appears to be receiving a lot of frosty glances as a result, 
and he has earned the contempt of his peers. Moreover, John has been demoted and moved to a branch office due to our company's stringent ethical policies. Since I have been covering the majority of our living expenditures up to this point, it stands to reason that he will run out of money if he keeps spending the same amount. It appears that this has finally dawned on him. He appears to be living in poverty as a result of having to pay child support and for the extravagant spending he made with his own card, in addition to being demoted and having his income further cut. His automobile has been suspended because he has been making late payments, and he isn't able to get a new one because all of his credit checks are failing. He got in touch with me and asked if I could reduce our son's school costs. I said no, I really didn't care, and I wouldn't do it. Of course, I politely declined. Then he boldly declared that he wanted to make amends with me after splitting up with the woman he had an affair with. Even more unbelievable is that. I said never contact me again, and hung up. The lady John cheated on her with was aware of his marriage, but she had kept it a secret from her parents as well. It appears that her personal infidelity also played a role in her prior divorce, and when her parents learned, they became enraged. They expelled her from the home and disowned her. Whether or not she had my contact information from John, she also gave me a call to request that I lower our son's educational costs. The idea that she would even approach me with this kind of request is just unbelievable. Naturally, I declined, and she was crying on the other end of the phone. Boy, I became acutely aware of how difficult divorce is. Nevertheless, I'm having a great time every day with my son, Max, at this point in my life. Compared to when his dad was at home, Max appears to be a lot happy and more at ease. There would be nothing to anticipate if I had assumed from the start that he wasn't there. That's why it's so refreshing. From now on, I want to continue putting my all into both my career and raising my son.